I am the founder of Mix Vixen. If you are new here, hey boo. And if you are not new here, thanks for coming back. I appreciate you. So as you can tell from the title, we are talking about the Renaissance. <laughs> We're talking about the Renaissance album. I am saying we because I brought on my friend Dr. Martinique, PhD. She is a licensed relational therapist and I specifically brought her on because she is the host of Queer Walk Pod. I've referenced that podcast a few times on this channel and I thought she would be an amazing person to have this conversation with. I do want to preface this by saying no Beyonce's were harmed during this video. Dr. Money is here. Thanks for coming through. I really, really wanted to have this conversation with you because honestly, when the album dropped, for some reason, me and you were texting. When you started expressing any of some of your feelings, I was like, oh, I have some of these too. And then like, oh, I should record whatever this conversation could be with yeah. money. So thank you for being here and doing this. What did you think of the album when you first heard it? Yeah. So yeah, we were texting and I was listening to it. <laughs> So at first, I feel like it took me a minute to get into it because like house mm. and club music is like not my favorite genres. So I was yeah. like, nah. But by the time energy started, I, I was like, okay, I think I'm understanding. Oh, yeah, it gave you energy? Like, yes, in, yes. And so I like it. I like that it can be like barbecue music. It can be like um, background music while I'm trying to write or get like chores done. And it can yeah. be turn up music. Like I can dance to it. So yeah, that's amazing. I got, I kind of had the same feelings when I first heard it. One, I think I just listened to it wrong. Like I literally just put Apple Music on on my phone. Like mm -hmm. no headphones, no like speaker that will distribute the, all of the sounds like I needed to hear. So I was like, okay, this is cute, right? Mm -hmm. That was like my yeah. first. Oh, this is cute. And then also, I do like dance music and house music and stuff like that. But I'm always very slow. Even though I'm a Beyonce fan, I always have to warm up to her stuff all the time. Like, it's not like a foreign thing. And I think I've gotten so used to a visual with a song yeah. that I need them. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I need her music in that way. I'm thinking about old Beyonce when she first came out and she still was dropping music the old-fashioned way. It's so funny that that's the old-fashioned way. Right. Um, but I used to always be like, oh, I'll wait for the video. Like, I didn't even mm -hmm. like single ladies until the video. Mm -hmm. When I first yeah. heard it, I was like, okay, whatever. Yeah. And then when I saw the video, I was like, oh, okay. You know, like, whatever. So I was thinking I need a visual. But then when I finally listened to it with the in the speakers, I'm like, okay, this is a this is a disco album, and I like yeah. disco music. So yeah. I, I think because I was able to be like, okay, this is disco. This is not like '90s house or whatever, like the that first single that we had. Mm -hmm. Then I was able to be like, oh, I know, I know what she's doing. Okay, now I'm here. Now I'm here. Um, that's what it was for me. Do you have favorite songs yet? I feel like my favorite is the trilogy because I because the the transition is so like beautiful from energy to break my soul to a uh, church girl. Mm -hmm. That that's one song to me. And <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite. <laughs> it's um, the transition stuff. Cause everyone loves the transitions. It's yeah. interesting to me because Solange had transitions like this in her last album. And everybody was like, what's this? What? What is this? I what is tell, this? I can't tell when the song changed. It's, I can't tell when it. Uh, okay, I'm yeah. glad you remember. <laughs> so I'm hearing I, everyone like so, like oh my god, transitions. I'm like, Solange did it. this, and y'all were like, what is this? Y'all did rejected it. It it was yeah. so bizarre to me that like Beyonce gets like celebrated for things that other people get shaded or critiqued for. Because yeah, yeah. I think, me personally, I think Solange has been the queen of, like, transitions and yes. interludes for yes. maybe, like, the past five years. Like, nobody yeah. else has yeah. paid as much attention since since A Seat at the Table. She's been running the, like, transition and, um, yeah. and interlude game. And everybody's been like, why? I don't get out. A new song started? And then... It all sounds like one long song. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. So when yeah. hearing everyone 
have orgasms over the transitions. I'm like, she got, you know, Solange told her that. Like, and yeah. I'm a Solange fan. Yeah. And I'm one of the rare people who was a Solange fan before I was a Beyonce fan, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it was just like, Solange was doing this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, and I know Solange, Solange don't care. Like, she's not on some, you know, whatever. She loves her sister to death. But it's just like, I've heard this. And y'all, I saw y'all bash it. So it's just yeah. really interesting to see everyone jizz over these transitions like it's, this. It's funny. It's like, even even a lot of the sounds are like recognizable from this Renaissance album. It's like other yes. people have done this. I've heard mm-hmm. it. It's not like innovative in that way, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, and it just, I mean, she do it and people go up for it for whatever reason. Yeah, that's the power of Beyonce. It's interesting. I, I do want to talk about the call of cult of Beyonce later in the conversation. <laughs> okay. <we chat. laughs> but I I do appreciate the work. I do appreciate that although we've heard it before, she still does it well. You know, yeah. like it does it so well. It's 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 a good album. I don't know if it's like my favorite, but it's a it's it's good. Like yeah. she I think I like when I hear a project where I know they thought about every single thing. That's, yeah. And Beyonce did that with this. Like, Mm -hmm. every single thing she thought about this, that, that, that. Like, it's just so complete. And it tells, to me, it tells a great story because I think Beyonce is, I think after, what was after four? Lemonade? Uh, Self-titled. Self-titled, okay. Mm -hmm. I feel like she tells stories now with her albums. Oh, Yes. <laughs> then, then she said goodbye to daddy. That yes. Every yes. album. Yeah. She tells like these really well written stories. Yeah. Um, and I really enjoy that about Beyonce. And I know that she's she's spoken about how people don't do albums anymore. Yeah. She wants to do albums and tell these full stories. So she's told us that's her intention. Mm-hmm. And she does that shit so good and i appreciate it like i literally especially this album because of the transitions and similar to solange i can't just listen to songs i kind of just have to listen to play it through listen to the whole piece yeah. and i can't just listen to a single listen to a single although there's a song on it i don't like so i always skip it <laughs> i don't like church girl <laughs> i don't no. like i don't like virgo's groove so oh my god with virgos if y'all know i like virgos groove now when i first heard it it was a little too soft too and lovey soft, right? and um I, that's not me yeah. <laughs> um and i expected i think i expected a lot more kick from virgos groove mm-hmm. like kind of like um you won't break my soul like i wanted some kick and it doesn't do that i do like the song mm-hmm. but it doesn't feel my virgo Need yeah. so I don't know, you know, yeah. but and I, I don't like church girls to so skip every time. Oh I don't, gosh. it sounds like a whole bunch of noise to me. It's a lot of noise, it's a lot happening. I feel like it's a lot of noise on the whole thing, to be honest. Mm-hmm. But got it, got it. it is, it is heavily produced, yeah. Like, I just feel like there's something produced. about that trigger man beat, the look, the like, you know, bounce. Music. No, I do. <laughs> that's what happens though. I, I'm listening. When the transition happens, I'm like, okay. And then the song starts. I'm like, oh, it's this song. And then I skip, <laughs> and then I skip it. it but I know like, all of y'all like it. I don't want to hate all y'all song, but that that one, I don't know. It's a skip for me. It's like gospel twerk music, and I love it. <laughs> I think that's why I can't relate, because like, I didn't grow up on gospel music. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's not. she's not singing to me. She's not singing to this Muslim girl. Like that's true. she's yeah. not doing that, so that's that. That could be why I just can't, you know, do it. But I'm dark brown, dark skin, light skin, beige, fluorescent beige, bitch. I'm black. I don't like to have conversations that everyone is already having or already exists in the ethos, mm-hmm. and I think that this one isn't one that I've seen a lot in the ethos. So I've. You know, I thought it would make sense for us to have it. Mm-hmm. You like the sound, it's great, whatever, but it also makes you feel uncomfortable 
a straight person benefiting from queer culture, queer black culture in this okay. way. So, okay, so you wanted yeah. us to get into it. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna get into it. Yes. All right. So I th- I feel like I can make a smooth transition from what we were just talking about into okay. this. All right, cool. I think the greatness of Beyonce, something I'll never take away from her. I mean, we know she's talented, yes. <laughs> yes. But but also that she is so detail oriented, like I think I stand that. Like, when you think of everything, like, when you like, here's what I'm going to do for Instagram. Here's what I'm going to do for my website. Yeah. This is going to be the sound. Yeah. yeah. And then it's like, okay, the album drops. And literally, like, the length of the album later, I'm going to go do this YouTube live. Thing. You know, it's like, it's just so detailed that I love it. And mm-hmm. the storytelling piece of it feels like it matters, too, because it's, it has felt political to me since yes. the title like with Beyonce we got girl boss feminism you know like, <laughs> like yeah I didn't <laughs> <laughs> I'm a feminist because I'm gonna be the best capitalist a better capitalist than a man yeah exactly <laughs> I'm, I'm a diva yeah. I do the same stuff he do so that yeah. means I'm free that yeah yeah mm-hmm. and I think that's where she had to start kind of out of this like you know what she was doing before then so I think it was a starting place. But then after that, with Lemonade, I mean, Formation was the lead single from that, that Big mm-hmm. Frida was also on. And yeah. I think, you know, you know, all the things Formation did, I think it spoke directly to, like, BLM protests that was happening at the time. And mm-hmm. I also think Lemonade spoke to, like, violence on multiple levels, like state violence, um, intimate violence, and, like, what harm looks like in different relationships. Mm-hmm. That that was so much of what of conversations that people were having at that time. So I like that storytelling, and then we went from there to what like homecoming felt like hashtag Black excellence, you know, yeah. <laughs> like what yep. we celebrate in Black community as excellent, you know, like college graduates and Greek letter organizations and um, representation mattering on Netflix and all that stuff. And then from there, I feel like she answered the diaspora wars with, (laughs) with the gift. I think that the gift is a Beyonce album. I don't know why people Mm -hmm. keep saying it's not. (laughs) It's actually one of my favorite Beyonce albums. It's a really good album. It's so good. And Black is King was excellent. Like, I laughed, I cried, I shouted, like it was an experience. Yeah. And then we get Renaissance, which I think is storytelling and speaking to the moment of trans and queer people. Yes. So I feel like at every moment she is responding to like us. And when I say yes. us, I mean like what black people are dealing with in the moment. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate that. However, yes. Cindy Cole. <laughs> However, semi colon. What's what's that? What's after that? I feel like the first reaction I heard because I I'm, I'm not one of these music people who like reads credits and knows who wrote what. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, I I know when people tell me. I be like, oh. Okay. <laughs> so I was listening to it and I was like, this sound like a Sid song, like. Mm-hmm. And, and so I think I was tweeting it or something oh no I posted on my IG story uh-huh. and, and somebody responded and was like oh Sid wrote it right and I'm like <laughs> <laughs> and then I was thinking of like the beats and stuff and it reminded mm-hmm. me of Kalela's uh, remixes album and so I'm like oh my gosh this sounds like that uh, remix album that Kalela did with like mm-hmm. DJ Mike Q who's like legendary ballroom dj he's Mm -hmm. like he's the dj on the show legendary or like honey dijon and like all these like you know like ballroom djs and i was like oh this sounds just like kalela's album with the remixes and then somebody was like oh that's because it is (laughs) oh (laughs) okay that's why i mean i guess it's good because you know these artists have signature sounds yes but I think what bothered me about it is like artists that are either outwardly identifying as queer or who get queer coded. What I mean by that is like, we know you queer, but like, <laughs> like, like they might not be vocal about their identities or mm-hmm. the way they maneuver in the industry is queer. Yeah. You like know? a Grace Jones. Is, like yeah. a Grace Jones, like a Khalees. Yeah. You know? like a Khalees. So yep. I'm like, I never see these folks get the kind of like flowers 
intends, for lack of a better like word, mm-hmm. that somebody like a Beyonce would get. Yes. You know? And even when people like play in queerness, they get way more like celebration and applause than queer folks. Yeah. Who are like, you know, just queer by like identity and makeup, yeah. but still doing excellent artistry, you mm-hmm. know? And so I'm just like, I never know how to feel about that. It reminds me of in The Souls of Black Folks, W.E.B. Du Bois talks about double consciousness for Black people, like how we constantly have to be aware of like our culture and what it means to be true as a Black person and also constantly aware of white culture Yes, and survival under it. Yeah, And there was this sociologist at Syracuse, Terrell Widener, who's a Black queer person, and they talked about multiplicative consciousness. And that just like changed yeah. my whole world. Because <laughs> I'm like, you're so right. As Black queer people, we don't just have to be aware of Black culture and white culture. We also yeah. have to be aware yeah. of heteropatriarchy. We yes. also have to be aware of gender. And I think I would feel different about non-queer people getting paid off queer culture if within the Black community we didn't have to fight these gender fights. If within yeah. the Black community we didn't mm-hmm. have to fight, you know, against transphobia or or queerphobia. It's like, we still got to fight those fights even within Black community. Yeah. So it feels... I don't even know what words to put to it, but it, it just... Now, I know what you mean, because for me, the, the feeling is there, but then I... I... I guess not, but yes, and my feeling also is like, how else does this stuff become popular? Or how else does this stuff become? And it's not in a sense because it was, because this music was ours before and it was Black queer music before, you know, and stuff like that. But I I think my question is usually like, is it genuine? Like, does, does she genuinely want to do this and mm-hmm. it's very hard to 100 percent say yes because she's a person with more privilege in the in the space mm-hmm. in the system mm-hmm. so there's no way that you can be like 100 percent ethically an ally to someone you mm-hmm. are um you have more privilege than you know so mm-hmm. it's it's a it's a weird kind of space you know i see how much joy it is giving black queer people but then it's also at the same time i understand that they will never be able to exist the way beyonce exists and that makes me upset you know (laughs) you know so that 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 is my you know my feeling and i do like the black queer joy surrounded around this album is amazing and i love it Mm -hmm. but i can't help not acknowledge that who this music is for who she created this album for yeah yeah can never exist the way beyonce exists because of cis cis had normativity you know right. so it's kind of you know a little bit of bittersweet mm-hmm. i like the way that she tried her best it's if you're a billionaire if you're a rich person if you're a capitalist it is you're never going to be ethically you can never be yeah. ethical in business and capitalism yeah, yeah, yeah. like can't but i think she tried really hard to be as ethical as she could in this by paying people and and queer like people crediting. specifically yeah crediting them like t.s madison said no i i got coin for that you know so mm-hmm. I appreciate that and I appreciate the centering of it, of, uh, you know, of us, of her telling us the story about her uncle, which really resonated with me because I've been grappling with the queer erasure in my family. I mm-hmm. could relate to that and I liked her doing a tribute to her gay uncle because I know mm-hmm. that there are so many of us, so many Black people who experienced this huge gay, Black gay erasure, Black queer yeah, erasure, like whatever, and like it doesn't exist. But it's still, like I said, bittersweet because I know that these people, even she could have paid every, everybody. She could right. include everybody. She could whatever. Right. But the fact that she has to like bring them up just shows yeah. the privilege that she has. And then it also shows that we still believe in this trickle down liberation shit. Exactly. exactly. And, and that's not how it works. Yeah. You know? With her, with her kind of whatever, mm-hmm. she could literally create her own platform for queer and trans artists of color you know yeah Mm -hmm. like that 
that's not happening. You know, she, <laughs> if you look, if you look at the tracks, it's still like vocals, Beyonce, 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 Beyonce. <laughs> like, I feel like there's a particular thing there where it's like Grace Jones is not like Grace Jones is not coming for a Beyonce spot on anything now. Yeah, exactly. So it's like I can credit her, put her name in the what whatevers, and like you know, this is paying homage. But yes, I mean something you said. I've been trying to think through this so much because I just always feel so split about it. It's like ballroom and like queer of of color culture was created because of the push out of mainstream. Yeah, right mm-hmm. and. So then this idea of like popularity, I feel like, I, I mean, we have been mine for our culture always as queer folks yeah. of color since, you know, back, 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 back. And I don't know what to make of like, like how, how is it different for a, the biggest pop star of our time, Beyonce, to do something like Madonna did with Vogue, that song, you know, it's like, oh, I like this. I'm going to make a song about it. And then it yeah. blows up and it becomes popular. But like, what's happening to the club kids? What's happening to the peer kids? You know, yeah, um, yeah. Beyonce was always going to get her tens. She could be mainstream without doing this. I feel like the, the five or whatever, like people who got paid, it just doesn't feel like enough to think about like the impact For me, Beyonce always reveals people's actual politics because I I see how people react. I see who I see who they um, protect. I see who, you know, how all of a sudden they'll be quiet about something. Even though I like this album, I wanted to talk about this. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there's other queer creators who want to say this, but they won't say it because it's Beyonce. It's Beyonce. Yeah. (laughs) And I even think between people, like, like it won't get said because it's Beyonce. Yeah. Like, I think what you yeah. just said, oh, I was like trying to think about this earlier. It's like, I see, I see like the disembodying of like who created something happening in real time with Beyonce. But like, everybody mm-hmm. can complicate and do whatever with everybody else. But when it comes to Beyonce, it's like, mm-mm, no critique. <laughs> Because Mm-mm. because when break protect off, that life skill, yeah, baby. I feel like there's a bigger thought, and then I'm gonna make it small. So my bigger thought okay. is, I I often feel like, especially as a black lesbian, that like queerness mm-hmm. is like this ghost that haunts black community. It's like it's never mentioned, uh-huh. but it's always there. Yeah. Like yeah. I mm-hmm. think about all of our popular ways mm-hmm. of critiquing society, culture. That comes from Black queer mm-hmm. women, you know? People be using bell hooks words and don't even know it's bell hooks. You did a video on this, yeah. right? You know? Yes, like, they do. People be using <laughs> argue Lord words, don't even know. Lord's words don't and even, don't even know. Yeah. I see that happening in real time with Beyonce. It's like, this mm-hmm. is the second, second lead single now that Big Frida, you know, has, has like the backbone. <laughs> I'm Big Frida the Queen Diva. She better be in the video. She, she better be in the video. But do you remember? Do you remember the summer where Big Frida was on everybody's song and in nobody's video? And nobody had him in a video. That's, yeah, Nobody had her in a video. Yeah, this yeah. is what I mean mm-hmm. by like queerness being the ghost that haunts black community. It's like, we yes. know. Even when I think about, because I, I love me some women rap, right? But even when we talk mm-hmm. about women rap, it's the high femme girls that we know are cisgender who are partnered yeah. with men. Like, like mm-hmm. those are the girls that we talk about. I'm like, Young young yeah. M.A. had, like, mainstream did Young M.A. so dirty. You know? I'm yes, like, she was a moment, they okay? <laughs> uh-huh. But yeah, to bring it bring it back to Beyonce, like Big Frida two times in a row, like like on on Lemonade and now on Renaissance is on the lead single. Yeah. Everybody's captions, everybody's reels, everybody Instagram stories. Beyonce told me to quit my job. Beyonce told me, I'm like, actually, Beyonce didn't tell me that. Big Frida did. Yeah. <laughs> and this is, yeah. this is what like bothers me about it and how I don't know how to feel because queer of color culture gets like used so much that we don't even know it's ours anymore. And then we're citing like Beyonce when like Big Frida is a whole like like trans elder, a whole like queer elder, a whole like 
bounce mm-hmm. music, yeah. you know, innovator, pioneer. Yeah. And so, yeah, that. It makes, what you say, it makes me think of the cycle of, I don't even know if it's a cycle, it's probably linear, who the hell knows, but how in, in Black communities, period, how we erase queer people, yes. like, and it's like, it's like, it's like, it's almost second nature and natural yeah. for us to just erase queerness, yeah. like in our families, in our communities, like we literally, like I, I think about Kendrick Lamar's song and it's like, even in that song, he's literally explaining to us the erasure and how yeah. he came to, around to not erase mm-hmm. this person in his family mm-hmm. anymore. You know, this yeah. is just a sad proof and it's we've seen it display yeah. in art mm-hmm. but i don't even think straight black folks know they do that straight black folks who are allies yes. i don't even think that they realize they're doing it because so it's, it's so ingrained yeah. in our culture yeah, yeah. to do that you know? it reminds me it's funny you mentioned kendrick lamar because i was thinking about this when um i was getting ready to get on with you i was like <laughs> i hear this stuff because i'm a i'm a black bull dagger. you know <laughs> That's that's why that's why I could be like laying in my bed at 1 30 in the morning and hear Grace Jones and like lose my mind, you know? It's like mm-hmm. or to even yeah. know to even know that that was T.S. Madison on that song. Yeah, but yeah. Mm-hmm. What are straight black women hearing? What are straight people hearing when they listen to this? What are cisgender people or like you know, to be real, what are people because queerness has been so erased? What are queer people who don't know about these queer folks? Yeah. About moi, mm-hmm. Renee, Miss Honey, Miss Honey. You know? <laughs> <laughs> There's a bunch of queer queer people who don't know who moi, Renee is. Don't know. Yeah, yeah. so it's like, mm-hmm. yeah. what are they hearing? And it reminds me of Kendrick Lamar, where I could go to a Kendrick Lamar concert and be in tears rapping along to We Gonna Be All Right, but also the mm-hmm. white boys who are in the VIP <laughs> I'm rapping to we gonna be all right. And you're like, what? Like, what are you? I'm, I'm, what are you talking about? What? When were you low? When was your pride? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think about my friends who are like very cis hat, right? Mm-hmm mostly family and like I'm thinking of like my older sister and I put a meme on one of my Instagram stories and I was it was basically the meme was like the straights are listening like nodding like I understand but I'm not so sure I do like they like it and (laughs) And my sister was like yep that's me (laughs) so it does make me think of that but what what that also reminds reminds me is that it's kind of like a a secret language or like a uh, you know, uh, you know, because queer queer people we have to code switch and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But I like that. Okay, maybe this can still be preserved for us yeah. because they don't even they know don't what even the fuck. Know. <laughs> yeah. They just like they don't know what's going on. You know, I, I forget the name of the song, but when she's like, "Uncle Johnny made my dress," I'm like, she is commentating, right? She sounds like yes. yep. like ten, ten, exactly. Cut, cut, cut. Yes. I'm feeling my cut. It's like. They don't. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know. And it's honestly, it's not for them to know. I like that that exists and that happens. The girls who get it get it. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Which isn't. Which is important. That it's not. It's not going to preserve anything a hundred percent. But it does make me know that this one. There's some self preservation still in that because queer erasure, queer black erasure this ghost that you talk about is it's, it's going to take up yeah. more space than them actually like coming into the career that they're, they're not, That's you know, they're That's not, true. um, yeah. you know, so there's still some, there's still some hope. <laughs> Beyonce not for me. So I don't, I can't, I catch what the fuck you mean by that. I was just about to say that. The fuck you mean Beyonce Damn. not for you. What also revealed or reiterated my uncomfortable feelings about this cultish mm-hmm. following that Beyonce have was how the controversy with the word, I'm going to say it for the sake of people knowing it, uh, for the, with the word, using the ableist word mm-hmm. spaz, and then also what, what happened with mm-hmm. Khalees. So for what happened with the, the S word, um, 
it was interesting to me because a few weeks before, everyone was dragging the fuck out of Lizzo. Drag. Up yes. and down the yeah. street about that word. And when I heard it on Beyonce, I was like, ooh, ooh, this, this did she not just see? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this just. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, I thought like, okay, maybe that conversation would happen, and it didn't. Ha- it happened really like, <laughs> yeah, don't, don't do that, girl. It's not nice. Like, it was, <laughs> um, and it just made me think about how hard people go to protect Beyonce to the point where it's like you look like a fool. You look mm-hmm. ridiculous. So it just made me. It was just. Really uncomfortable to see people not even bring it up, but then also more over people who were trying to defend. They did this with Lizzo too, but trying to defend the use of the word, saying it's A A B E. No, I speak slang. Like that's not a word that I've heard since the yeah, nineties. Yeah. <laughs> so what are you fighting yeah. for? You know. So it's just really interesting to see those two intersections. People, I'm um, championing for A V E, and then other people not even addressing it because Beyonce. Beyonce. Yeah. And that's why I say for me, Beyonce. Anytime she does anything, it reveals so many people's actual politics to me, like their lived yeah. politic, not the one that yeah. they talk about, but their lived mm-hmm. politic, because not a peep. Like people that I've seen on social media who will talk Ableism. about ableism and not yep. a peep. And it's just yeah. like, whoa, yeah. it's, it's interesting. So I just wanted to know some of your thoughts on that particular well i think everything you said i definitely thought too i feel like a lot of black twitter's reactions remind me that like we are a community that has been like so i mean trauma doesn't even begin to capture like what black americans have experienced and the and the, the foot has never been lifted off of our neck right like we we have never been given space to breathe and heal away from the harm that we've endure and continue to endure yeah. in America. So I feel like we we start to defend our reactions to what we've endured and survived as culture. And yeah. this is oh, I forgot nice. his name, but um he's a therapist and uh he used to work for the police department and he was like I can't do this no more, a black dude and he wrote he wrote mm-hmm. the book My Grandmother's Hands about intergenerational trauma about why he couldn't Mm -hmm. work for the police department anymore, right? And so I I think that so much, whenever I'm on Twitter, I'm like, we we have never been given space enough to breathe, so much so to the point that we start to call trauma culture, you know? And so I just think, like, we as Black people are way too creative and innovative to, like, continue to use language, even if it's our language, you know, a language that we create. (laughs) <laughs> that is basically like our oppression uh-huh. because like yes mm-hmm. ableism and anti-blackness were created simultaneously in the united states you know <laughs> it's like, yes, like to be yeah. black was mm-hmm. to be disabled like not able like you are yes. not even human mm-hmm. you know and so yep. it's like ableism is not separate from anti-blackness so if we can understand that like we shouldn't use language that is colorist or like you know, rooted in white supremacy, we should be calling people enslaved instead of slaves, then we can understand yeah. that, like, maybe some of our AAVE is real deeply ableist. <laughs> yeah. we, come, we come up with language all the time. Like, there's always a new word that I'm like, what that mean? Or we give it, we give yes. it new meaning. Like, my, one of my clients was talking about they spent the block on somebody I'm like, when I was your age, spent the block mean you circle back around to make sure like it wasn't no witnesses. Yeah. <laughs> but apparently, apparently now spend the block means getting back with your ex. And I- yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, because the first time someone said say less to me, I was like, excuse you, I'ma say whatever I want. And they was like, I right, oh. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> I'm, I, yeah, I'm like, we're too innovative. Like, our language can evolve. Um, yeah, yes, 
Definitely. It can yeah. evolve. It can do all of that. And honestly, Beyonce doesn't need the amount of protection that yeah. people give her. She also doesn't need the defending mm-hmm. that people do for her. And f- for me, that's what I saw a lot when it came yeah. to this situation with Khalees. And Beyonce, I was like, Beyonce don't need y'all defending her. Y'all were going really hard to defend somebody who doesn't Any. need any of it who is protected who is protected yep. by systems and yeah. all of the stuff that protect yeah. her just mm-hmm. naturally yeah and people are jumping this... through hoops to protect this person who literally won't say nothing to you beyonce 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 don't like us like that <laughs> she don't even like y'all we love her but she don't like us she like don't that like y'all. I'm a Virgo too. I know she don't like us like that. This is what's so weird to me. When I first saw it, I was like, y'all know we are all Khaleesis, right? Like, we're all Khalees. Like, not many of us are Beyonce's. <laughs> like, I, it just was so baffling to me the way, like, people identify with her. And then they, they couch it in this, like, defending Black women thing. And I'm like, it's not about defending Black women. Khalees is also a Black woman. Lizzo is also a black yeah, woman. Yeah, it was. It's all, black woman, y'all drive yes. Lizzo all down the timeline. So <laughs> all day, but like you said, like Khalees exists very yeah. queer. Like, no, she hasn't. You know, but the way she exists, even how she did yes. music, and this is why a lot of her stuff is replicated. She she used the word stolen, yeah. so on yeah. and so forth, because she was doing stuff that people are doing now that she was doing in the 90s in the late 90s early 2000s like she for me she doesn't get enough flowers for the work she has done all of you bitches who are whispering you wouldn't even have nothing (laughs) if someone who's saying the way who she's saying who isn't belting who doesn't sound like a gospel singer but bring something to you wouldn't even have a career if she you know it's just like so that was really like Wild and strange. Obviously, I'm a Kalees yeah. fan too. That's that we were we were married and everything, right? Um, <laughs> everything. Y'all was a um, throuple, right? Nas. Nice. But <laughs> yes, we were a throuple. Yes, we, me, her, and Nas were a throuple. Um, although that was before yeah. I knew he was abusive. But yes, that's neither here nor there. The thing that struck out for me in that moment also was people's politics. Like, what is it actually? If you see someone who, and I, honestly, it's not even about what Beyonce did, to be honest, because I don't think she, honestly, I don't think she did anything. Me personally, I feel like I would have reached out, right? But I'm me and Beyonce's her. I just think it's an example of when you are in her positioning, when you are that big yes. capitalistic ass yes. entity, it is difficult for you to be 100% yes. ethical. Some you shit can. gonna happen, yes. right? Mm-hmm. You can't. It's impossible. So I could excuse it to that, right? Mm-hmm. Although I do think it brought up the harm that Khalees yeah. experienced. And it was just really interesting to see people kind of just diminish that. Like we we control the, Beyonce she, didn't say anything. We control that conversation. And we could have made that conversation yes. about Khalees. Yes. We could have made that conversation yeah. about her harm. We, we, we could have maybe got her the rights to her first two albums back from Pharrell. But instead, yes, I think I'm. I know it's because of uh, like patriarchy and misogyny, but I'm just like they made this a fight yeah. between Khalees and Beyonce. When first of all, Beyonce didn't say nothing. So yeah, <laughs> I'm like, but what Khalees did was call out. Yes, she said Beyonce, and this is the thing. She was like, she's Beyonce to y'all, but we got mutual friends. She could have reached out to me. And I feel like when she was talking about theft, Kelly's was like, what, 17 when Kaleidoscope was released, the first album? She, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I heard on Kim Foster's channel, she, she said this too. She's like, how many of us signed stuff at 17, 18? Didn't read it. That's how many of us are in student loans. Let me tell you, I ain't read my lease to this apartment. I signed it though. <laughs> you know, how many of us click I accept to the terms and conditions on websites? Just, mm-hmm, yep, yep. You ain't read nothing. But okay. yeah, so I'm like, she was going off the strength of this older dude, you know, who is like, yes. you know, split this. Who she yes, believes. she believes. Yes. 
And then years later, I feel like it is intentional, right? People was trying to be like, oh, it wasn't a sample. It was an interpolation. Look. I don't care. You still my I'm tweet. I'm coming it. for you. I don't <laughs> care. It's like, can you imagine like something you created? This is over 20 years ago now that is still being yes. like sampled, used, and you get nothing off of it? Nothing. Like nothing? Nothing. The very least you could give Nothing. police is her things, right? Like, just to be like, yes. you did that. And it, it was is. funny to hear it people is. be like, it's... oh, because Beyonce removed the sample. And they were like, well, she now she's not going to be able to pay her rent. Y'all y'all missed the whole point of what Khalees was saying. She's never been paid off of yeah, this but... music. She's never been paid. But also for me, that speaks to how much they go hard yeah. to just blindly yeah. defend and protect Beyonce, who, does, who hasn't said a word. She hasn't said anything. And for me, when she removed the sample, for me, that showed me that she mm-hmm. uh, kind of agrees. So it was like, you know what? Psh, let me The same way that she made sure she yeah. removed that word yeah. is the same way yeah. she removed that, which for me shows it represents her like, oh, okay, like, all right, yeah, I don't mess up, take that yeah. down. You know, like that type of thing. But for some reason, because everyone's cult relationship with Beyonce, that it gave them more reason to like yeah. dump on Khalees. Yeah. Like, if this happened, Khalees said, it, Khalees said this yeah. is good, good, great, thumbs up. Yeah. She didn't really want anything. What she was just stating was, this is just me making me revisit my heart. Yeah. That's what the fuck. She was saying, and yeah. y'all took it to some other thing. The girls are fighting. First of all, it takes two to fight. Beyonce ain't say nothing because y'all do all the dirty work for I her. Mean, and this seems to be a pattern in her life. We saw the elevator footage. <laughs> and she just stands calmly. And you just do all the work. <laughs> Solange swinging. Y'all all, the work. y'all all look like Solange in that elevator. <laughs> Like, y'all, when I say y'all, I'm like the people I follow on Twitter who are caping for being like, I'm like, yes. y'all are Khalees in this situation. Mm-hmm. Like, how, how many of us, of I've seen so many of the people I follow that have been like, oh my gosh, I did this thing and this person with a bigger platform stole it, got all this money off of it, paid, and now I'm sitting here. So many people I follow who were like seemingly capable for Beyonce. It was just so wild for me to see that, especially a, being a person who is yeah. a content creator, um, uses liberation as you know the the fuel of the content that I create. So to see that was just like, yo, like, <laughs> is this black feminist, womanist, whatever thought? Um, real or not you know and it's like mm-hmm. we're all human we're not all going to do it 100 percent the same on 100 percent correct because what is correct but it was just really interesting to see how quickly people was ready to just throw yeah. stuff under the bridge for mm-hmm. the cult mm-hmm. that is beyonce and it was just like maybe i'm being taking it too hard or being too deep but like damn we're never gonna be free because that's all it took all it took was yeah. for Khalees to drop mm-hmm. that video for y'all to just throw all of this stuff that I've seen you say you want to dismantle, that I've seen and heard you say you mm-hmm. want to get rid of, that you you know is not adjacent to your liberation, that, 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 whatever the fuck. And yeah. you're yep. doing it yep. just that easy. Yep. Over some, some... All these... <sighs> Was, I don't know. Like, I was I was just right people, mutual aid people. Like we sh- people. we shouldn't have to pay to just like live. We should have basic universal pay people. black women. Oh, people. the pay black women people. We <laughs> this black girl who is just minding her business, living the queer dream, right? Like on a farm, minding her business. I want, I want that farm so, so bad. bad. Changing hair colors every time we so see her. Bad. Like she literally black yes. girl bliss but she like hey like 20 some odd years ago pharrell stole all this shit from me and we're like boo tomato 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 <laughs> that's why you can't pay your bills i'm like not y'all talking about her paying her bills and y'all can't pay y'all bills 
And y'all can't pay y'all bills. You're, you're using your phone on a free Wi-Fi at the library, and you talking about, which is not the wrong with, I'm just using this because of the situation, right? And you talking about heart and help. It was just really, really wild. Um, I, yeah. I just did not expect to see all of that. But also that always happens with anything with Beyonce because she has a really strong cultic following where people yeah. just start showing their yeah. ass. Um, I, so just to defend her. It's like they're yes. light skin God. It's so yeah. wild and like weird to me. And as a fan, someone who mm-hmm. loves her work. And all of that, it's just it's just so scary for me to see people love something so yeah. unconditionally that they will excuse horrible stuff. Uh, not really excuse, but like yeah. they won't even address it because it not even they won't even address it, or will just go wild with yeah. defending her and making sure that. She, they are protected when there's already systems yes. in place protecting them. I don't need to do anything yeah. to protect Beyonce's yeah. Beyonce. Yeah. Wow. Just how hard people went to protect this light skin cis. That's all straight. Right. If, if, if this was going to be you her said. coming out, then maybe we would be having a different story, a conversation. <laughs> but like. <laughs> Just like Beyonce doesn't need protecting, so it's just really strange to see the hoops that people jump yeah. through to protect her, even if it was just yeah. for entertainment. Yeah, it, it, was, it was whack. She even don't, if it's just she don't for jokes, it. I think it's so revealing because it feels like the, yes. the motivation to protect her they cloud it in all of this like political language around protecting black women and paying black women, but like. If the only black women you are willing to protect are the ones that are billionaires, cisgender, beautiful, yep. light skin, you know, like, yes. like yes. list, 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 yep. the, the access. Checks all the, the boxes yeah. that leads to white supremacist patriarchy. It's like, capitalism. Who, what black women are you actually protecting if your wrath to mm-hmm. fiercely protect them only comes out when it's Beyonce? It's, like I said, most yeah. of us ain't Beyonce. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I'm I'm Michelle falling down at 106 in Park at best. <laughs> Shoot, I'm a, I'm the member that had to get her her, her lucky shit. Like, what was her? I don't remember her name. But I'm her at best, you know. <laughs> I'm like, if we gonna be doing this for Beyonce, then we also need to be doing it for you know, like the unsigned whatever artist who is who constantly gets passed over for like the mediocre white talent, you know. Yeah, I just wish that our social media, Black Twitter, whatever, did a better job to make this conversation about the exploitation of Khalees. Yeah. Because it probably could have helped. We probably could have made it. We probably could have did what we did for Anita Baker. That's like, yes. We we, we could have made it something else. Mm-hmm. But because we want to protect this light-skinned queen, Beyonce, we threw all of the, the, yeah. the stuff the work that we've been doing out the window to yeah. like crack jokes and make fun of someone who has a farm, which is actually like a good idea considering yes. we're in a food shortage. Wow, well, I just wish we made better use of that time. Yeah, we could have done we, all, like what do they call an accountability process and repaired the harm. We could have done all of that and all of that. This is no, it's just, I don't know. I will forever be confused because I think I would feel differently about it if it was like. The people I've unfollowed or blocked because I know where they politically stand, you know. But it's uh, just shocking yeah. to me that it's people I follow. You know, it's like yes, I'm saying that same. was what it was for me. I was, I was like, like, whoa, whoa, you. Any other time, you would be talking about accountability, harm reduction, harm repair. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you would be calling somebody elitist and cla- capitalist and classes. Yeah, but not Beyonce though. <laughs> How do you not understand that maybe there's an ounce of accountability in Beyonce yeah. and that's why she was like, all right, let me not, yeah. you know, let me make sure Pharrell and them are not getting paid yeah. and further exploiting this other black other woman. Factors. Like, why can't that be mm-hmm. your thought mm-hmm. when it was pulled, but your thought is, I hope you could grow some potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> I still hope she reached out. I still hope she, you know. 
behind mm-hmm. the scenes says something to Kelly's because just pulling it in silence still feels off to me. No, agree. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But for me, that is what makes Beyonce this cult is because she never tells us what she's thinking, never tells us these things, but leaves us scrambling yeah. with all these ideas and theories and we're like fighting with each other and she's just looking at us it's like the ideal she's like the ideal source for a parasocial relationship because she's not giving you nothing i'm scared like cults i grew up in a nation of islam so that was a cult you know like (laughs) cults yeah yeah are frightening to see one person have that much power and to see her yeah the influence, the power, and people's politics just go out the window yeah. just, like, at the snap of a anything was, I don't know, just alarming. I was going to say, if it comes from love, I can't remember who said it, but it's like, shouldn't, like, anything you love be, you should be able to critique it? Like That's how, and that's how, yes, I agree. Yeah. And that's what I want more of us to be like because that's what that's when harm happens yes like that's how we are abused that's how we are harmed it disappoints me when i see that people can just that easily just throw all of their like morals and sensibilities out the window because khalees released a video saying yeah. beyonce has stole my stuff she should have called me mm-hmm. it was just weird and wild um and i wanted to have that conversation with someone and thank you for having it with me this was cute i enjoyed it thank you too. <laughs> so yes we enjoy beyonce but like you said if you really love someone you should be able to critique them and this is our honest critique of the controversy the album the way that straight people, straight black people in particular, interact with queerness. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it to the end, I totally forgot to ask Money to plug her stuff. You can follow Money at Queer Wild Pod on Twitter and Instagram. Their personal accounts, Better Than Money on Twitter and Instagram. I also have those down below. Please follow her. She is an amazing person and she does amazing work. So when I recorded the conversation that Money and I had, it was before the remixes dropped. Beyonce has since dropped mad remixes of the You Make Break My Soul song. And also while I was editing, I realized there were some things that I left out that I just want to say quickly. One more thing that I do really, really, really love about the album is that it's full of affirmations. If you fuck with me, you know that I am all about affirmations. I'm all about hearing things that affirm my existence. And I think it is a very queer affirming album given all of the other things that we discussed in our conversation. Also, something that stuck out to me was during our conversation, Money brought up Madonna and how this happened before when Madonna released this song Vogue and Vogue was basically stealing from ballroom culture and you know making it mainstream and it's really interesting that Beyonce released a remix of You May Break My Soul and she uses the Vogue sample and it's a part in that song where formerly Madonna's descent I guess mad white woman that she finds amazing Beyonce used that and instead replaced it with all the black women entertainers that Beyonce thinks is amazing. And that's great. And honestly, a lot of those people she said, I think are amazing too. But it's interesting, similar to what Money said, how in real time queer people are erased. There are no (laughs) queer people mentioned in that. There are a few houses. So houses, you know, in the ballroom scene is a thing. So she does mention a few houses, but she doesn't specifically mentioned a queer person while doing a song that already had in the past appropriated forum culture. So it's interesting and I didn't want to leave this without saying that because it needs to be said somewhere. Once again, thank you for watching this video. If you have any comments about what we discussed today, please leave them down below and I will see you in the next one.